Meet Sura. She's four years old and she has pneumonia. Unfortunately, in many developing countries, pneumonia is a major health problem and cause of death among children under the age of five. To prevent and reduce childhood pneumonia, the Netherlands Red Cross funded programs in five African countries. The center of our approach was to motivate people to act by changing their behavior and building individual, family, and community support systems around them. This method can be applied to other areas of work, not only health. In this video, we will guide you through the steps we took to facilitate behavior change. As a first step, we have to identify the needs. In our case, the need was preventing and reducing respiratory infections in children under five years old. The assessment is done mostly through data collection, finding out about the underlying factors that can lead to the high number of pneumonia cases. It's clear that people's behavior contributes significantly to the problem. So, to reduce the high incidence of pneumonia, individuals, families and communities needed to change some key practices. The second step is to get a better understanding of why people behave in certain ways and how they can be supported to adopt new behaviours. The best way to start is by speaking to community members. We can conduct interviews and group discussions. We can identify the barriers that might stop people to act, but also the factors that can motivate them. For example, in our program, we found various barriers. The third step is designing a communication strategy on how to change behavior. It's done through a workshop where all the main stakeholders are present. During the workshop, we are able to discuss the problems as well as the necessary changes. The resulting communication strategy covers the most important elements of the program. In our case, the benefit of involving key stakeholders in the process was a greater acceptance of our strategy, which led to a larger health impact. The next step is validating the communication strategy. Meeting again with the community members, we share the results from the workshop and collect feedback. The community checks that the information is correct and the plan is appropriate and acceptable for them. If necessary, based on the feedback, the plan can be revised. In our program, having the community's participation had many benefits. Building on the previous steps, now we can develop our communication materials. First, we can look for similar programs, communication materials, and generic messages. In our program, we used pre-existing generic messages from the District Health Office combined with newly developed ones. It's important to test and validate these materials too so that the information presented is clear and appropriate for the community and can be put into practice. In testing our materials, for example, one father found it offensive to cross out a traditional healer on a poster. Based on the feedback, redesigning the material and reprinting might be necessary even though it can cause some delays. Now it's time to put our strategy into action. First, we need to train volunteers on how to mobilize community members or organize activities. These trainings often make use of standard Red Cross packages like community-based health and first aid. We are now ready to start the communication activities. In order to deliver the key messages, the volunteers conduct engaging events. Encouraging conversations, they can discuss the viable actions and changes needed. Volunteers also provide support to individuals and families for effective change. As a final step, we have to monitor our activities and messages as well as measure their impact on people's behavior. For the necessary feedback, we can visit the community monthly. 
The results can be used in revisioning and adjusting both the messages and the planned activities. We also measure the impact of our activities using a set of indicators. That's it. This is how we implemented the behavior change communication approach. We hope that by following these steps, you will be able to design and implement your own program to help people and to save lives.